right? Catch play, super important. Think about it. How many days do you play a week during the summer? Four? How many days do you practice? Maybe another two days? So it's about six days a week you're on a baseball field. What do you do before every practice? Not any warm ups, right? Max is going to do one for us today. And then you catch play, correct? What do you do with catch play? You make about 30 throws, right? You said six days a week, that's 180 opportunities for you to catch the ball the right way, right? But we're doing catch play the other day, I saw a lot of kids do this. How many plays in baseball are like this? How many plays in baseball are like this? None, right? So going forward, you guys are still playing summer baseball. When you guys are going through your catch play routine, you're going to focus on pocket awareness, right? My face and ball and glove are lined up. I'm going to bring it to center separation. I'm going to stabilize the front side, right? I'm going to learn on sequence of my lower half, creating that stretch and creating that back. I throw a 12-6 spin and hit my partner in the chin every time, 180 throws a week, simply in catch play before we start practice, all right? If you care, if this is important to you, if you want to play at a high level. Yesterday I asked how many kids want to play Division One baseball. That's pretty for hand. My next question is how many kids want to play professional baseball? Everybody want to raise their hand, right? Raise their hand. Right, in order to do that, you have to develop a good habits and practice. Right? Two quick stories, right? These are very talented and knowledgeable baseball coaches back here. They're all, play they're all still playing, they're all playing at a high level, okay? A uh, quick story, when I, my, uh, I played here in Bluefield, West Virginia, in our church, um, always had all these great stories. And one of the stories that I always remember is he was coaching in AAA, and he had two first basemen. They were both about 23 years old. Right, they were both about 6'2", plus power, right, minus running, both lefties can pick it, identical first baseman. They just drafted an, uh, another first baseman, a stud. And the management, the upper management said, Coach, we have to release one of these first basemen. Super nice guys, have been playing minor league baseball since they're 17 years old. And that coach knew that when he had, when he had communicated that information to that player, that essentially would be the end of his baseball career. He's been playing baseball since he was your age, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. So he, he, his task was he had to go to pick a first baseman and explain to him why they're releasing him. You know what, you know what the main reason was? Stand up, stand up right here, stand up. Come up to me, shake my hand. Every day, one of, one of the first basemen would come up to him, say, you're the coach, come up to him and say, take a day, skip. Great day to work out there, let's go. Every day. He kept that first baseman because that first base, that player knew. So when you're around coaches like us, right, this is what Zach, does for 11. This is what I do for 11. So this is what coach every all these coaches we do for 11. So when you're on a baseball field, you got to respect the game. Respect the coach. If you're only out today, so it's a long day, but typically when you're on a baseball field, you're on the field for maybe two and a half hours. Get locked in. Get to work in. Really, from my experience, really good players that want to play at a really high level love to learn. Love that knowledge. Right? They want to get an edge. Right, they want to separate themselves from other players when they go to that trial because they're more knowledgeable. Right, they know how to take better efficient routes as infielders. Right, they, they've already mastered their swings because coach, someone like Coach Zach, I've taught them how to swing the right way. Does that make sense? So don't take it for granted. All right, when you're on a baseball field, ask yourself at the end of practice, what did I learn today? Did I do everything necessary to learn and get better today? That was my first point. Second point, you're going to hear a lot of voices. I coach Zach. At the university for three years, one of the best, probably the best hitter I've ever coached. Super nozzle. Four years. Four years. You know what he would do every day? Every day he'd come to the office and he'd watch a YouTube video and say, Coach, I, I, I changed my swing to this now. Coach, the next day, Coach, I changed my swing to this. Boom. And what, what he didn't realize is, and I would just, I would placate him and say, Yeah, yeah, Coach, I, you know, back to your thing, your thing. But what he didn't realize is that his hands, were so quick from here to here, right? Then it did, didn't matter where he started. Like he could have started backwards like this and but still hit the ball. So my point is you're gonna hear lots of voices. A lot of voices, especially when it comes to pitching and hitting probably more dominant, okay? So you gotta understand what works for you. How many of you guys have personal hitting coaches? Speed and agility coaches. You're gonna have a lot in your journey. Alright, number one, we talked about it yesterday. Number one, have a really good relationship with that coach. What does that mean? Don't just say, you know, be respectful. Don't just say yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, right? If he's asking you to have some barrel movement launch and widen your stance and you're still hitting cheesy infield flies and you're still over for June, talk to that coach. 
say, Coach, I know you're telling me to do this and do this, this, but you have to really have that good communication because it's your journey. Right? And unfortunately, sometimes coaches will make you the player that they were. Right? So you got to find what works for you. If you look, if you look at big league hitters, they're, they're all a little different in their stance. Right? If you look at big league hitters, some of them have pre tapped descent. Some of them keep their hands like this. Right? We, as coaches, good coaches never want to take the natural athleticism away from a player. They're fast twitch fibers and all that. All right, so don't be robots out there, right? If you're an infielder and you're thinking, right, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have to clear to the right, I have to chop right, left field, glove out, you're not going to make that play, right? It's not going to, your body's not going to process what your mind is thinking because it's, too, it's, too, it's just too fast, right? You just have to be reactive. You have to take those 3,000 ground balls during the week and work on those four or five different patterns on a routine ground ball so when that time comes, right, it's just natural and instinctive. Does that make sense? So again, yesterday was a great day. I was super pleased. Everybody was locked in, right? Really good job yesterday. Yesterday was warm up. It's gonna be a little bit harder today, okay? The format for today, Coach Max is gonna get you guys through a dynamic warm up, right? We're gonna go through some infield progression drills. We're gonna start with our absolutes and our vitamins, our short off the power progression, and we're gonna work on angles today. Then we're gonna get mass GBs, work on something else, and then we're gonna hit. Does that make sense? All right, Zach, anything? Oh, let's go, Max, what do you want? Yeah, we'll just go in the same way. Let's go. Everybody, gloves on. Let's go. Nobody walks. Here we go. Nobody walks. Okay. 